Hi there, I'm Dean. I've always avoided being around girls. I saw how girls ruined my family. When I was young, my dad found out that my mom had been cheating on him, and it was during a family reunion. Everyone was there, and suddenly my mom disappeared. My dad went looking for her, and when he saw her, he started yelling. We all rushed to see what was happening, and there was my dad, trying to push a man away, and my mom was trying to stop him. Of all the people you can cheat on me with, you chose my brother? Mom disappeared after that. So did Uncle Max. I heard they got married and now have two kids. I had to grow up watching Dad bring home girlfriend after girlfriend over the years, but none of his relationships lasted because all they ever wanted from him was his money. Some girls stole from him. Others tried to use his influence so they could get better jobs. One of them even tried to go after me when Dad broke up with her. So when I was old enough to date, I made sure I avoided being around girls as much as I could. And it was a tough job. I was popular, even though the only thing I wanted was the opposite. I did well in sports, so they made me the captain of the basketball team. I also excelled in math, so I was pretty much pushed into being the leader of the math club. And everywhere I went, be it a game or math championship, the girls would come running. I did my best not to get tangled up, though, and I would always be the first to leave. And I'd use the back door so nobody would know where I went. But at school, as soon as classes were finished, there would be a line of girls waiting for me. Hey, Dean! I heard they finished building that new restaurant downtown, and I got invited to the opening night. I'm looking for a plus one. Uh, I'm not hungry. Thank you. My friend is, though. Hey, Dean, I heard that new movie about rabbits is pretty good. I have two tickets. Oh, I have tickets too. No, I got the best seats in the house. Take me. Oh, um, I'm busy tonight. Why don't you all go together since you've all got tickets anyway? Uh, thanks. Bye. That's the main reason I had so many guy friends. Every time I said no to a girl, they got to swoop in and take the girls on the dates they got rejected on. But then, one day, all my fears and all my will to avoid girls disappeared. It was at the gym. I was fully expecting my usual trainer. But Venus appeared in her training outfit, and I was smitten. It was over. I was head over heels. I only had an hour of training, and I barely noticed it pass by while lifting and stretching and doing cardio. It was the longest hour of my life, and I wished it would never end. I went home that day with only Venus on my mind. I went to the gym every day. My usual trainer kind of got upset that I switched over to her. But what could I do? I was so into her. After seven months of trying to get her to go out with me, she finally said yes, and I made sure I impressed her. I rented a limo when I picked her up, I closed down an entire restaurant, and at the end of the date, I took her to a hill that overlooked the whole town. We got served a picnic and got serenaded with a violin as we watched the sunset. Before we left, I presented her with a velvet box, and inside it was a necklace that had an emerald pendant. Oh my god, this is, this is too much. I can't possibly accept this. She made me put it on her regardless, and she gave me a kiss on the cheek. Wow, if I'd known you were this fancy, I would have gone on a date with you sooner. That should have been her first red flag, but I was so smitten by her that I didn't even notice. It was my fault, too. I showered her with gifts, treated her to lavish dinners, and took her on trips to expensive destinations. I promised her the world, and she expected it. Over time, it started feeling like I was buying her affection. I was paying for her time. Venus began to demand that she get something in return. For everything. Otherwise, she wouldn't show up. Hey, babe, it's Dad's birthday today, and his company is holding a bit of a celebration. Want to come by and be my plus one? Uh, yuck. Won't it be a bunch of old people in suits talking about boring stuff? No thanks. I'd rather get a pedicure. Unless... Unless... Well, if you want me to go so much, why don't you make it worth my while? I ended up buying her a couture dress just for being my date. If I didn't cave into her demands, perhaps things would have happened differently, and I could have saved myself all the trouble. 
But that night, Venus ended up having more fun than she expected. She charmed everyone in that ballroom. She even ended up making friends with some heiress, who were the daughters of my dad's friends. All the men were fascinated by her, and to my surprise, Venus kept up with their talks of business and politics. I fell even deeper in love with her. She wasn't just beautiful, she was smart and elegant, and brimming with charisma, too. She was so popular that she even got a dance with Dad by the end of the night. I never thought Dad would approve. He was very apprehensive of me bringing a girl home for him to meet. But when I saw them laughing together and having fun, I felt relief. I was so glad that he approved of her. Venus and her new heiress friends hung out a lot. They went partying and shopping together so much, I felt left out. We hardly saw each other, so when I found out she was going on a trip with them, I begged to go with her. But you can't. But why? We haven't gone out together in weeks. It's a girl's trip, babe. The clue's in the name. Okay... But then I can just go to the island too, and maybe we can meet up while you're there. Baby, just give me some freedom. I promise we'll spend time when I get back. I just want to be with my girls right now. The reason she wanted to be with her girls is because they buy her clothes, and she got to keep whatever they didn't want in their wardrobes. As if I didn't buy her enough stuff. She was acting pretty cagey about it, so I decided to watch her closely. And I realized something that I had brushed off before. Whenever we were together and someone would call her, she'd excuse herself. And when she was texting, she'd make sure the screen was angled a little bit so I wouldn't see. She was pretty subtle, but I could feel something was up. It all started after that party. She was different. And I wanted to find out why. So I went to a friend and had him build a custom pair of sunglasses. I bought the most expensive I could find. And my friend fitted it with an antenna, the tiniest processor money could buy, and a camera. Have fun on your trip, babe. Oh, and before you go, I figured there'll be lots of sun where you're going, so I got you these. A present? Oh, you shouldn't have. Oh, they're lovely. Oh, gosh. They're Dior. Knowing her, she'd wear those sunglasses everywhere. She loved to show off, and this time, her vanity was gonna uncover her secrets. I was planning on going incognito and following her, but with this gadget, I didn't even have to go out of the house. I watched her every move, and right from the get-go, it was all suspicious. When they landed on the island, there was a guy waiting for them. I could hear them all giggling excitedly as the guy took them all on a yacht. They sailed to Monaco, where they spent the evening at the casino. And my girlfriend flirted openly with every guy out there, until the guy they were with took her by the arm and whispered, I'm getting jealous, you know. If you flirt anymore, I might have to take you far away from here and keep you in a tower. I heard Venus giggle. Something about that voice was familiar, but I could never catch a glimpse of the guy. He always had his back turned or one of the girl's hats would cover his face. They spent a couple more days on the yacht, just island hopping and bathing in the sun. There was a moment when the guy was looking straight at Venus, but the glare of the sun made sure that I could only see his silhouette. I was so desperate to find out who he was that I wished that something would happen. And just as I finished that thought, the girl screamed, and the camera went shaky. Venus was standing at the very edge of the yacht, and a wave hit the side of the boat. Her hat went flying in the air, and the sunglasses landed on the deck, and the lens cracked. I breathed a sigh of relief when someone picked it up and started wiping it. I thought it was ruined, but as the guy finished cleaning it up, even through the cracks, I saw my dad's face. He smiled and gave it back to Venus, who took one look at the broken thing and quickly discarded it into the ocean. Before she threw it away, I could clearly hear my dad's voice. That's all right, darling. I'll buy you an even better one. I was so mad. I packed my bags and went on a search for my mom. I took my dad's favorite car. The rest of his collection I drove into a ditch nearby. I posted his address online and told everyone they can party as much as they wanted there. I wanted his house to be a mess when he returned. When I found my mom, I became her protege. I ascended the ranks in her company faster than anyone, until I finally became its CEO.
We were expanding worldwide, and I knew Dad was struggling financially after he got married to Venus. Her appetite for expensive things drove him close to bankruptcy. So, when I offered to buy his company, he basically had no choice but to sell it to me for cheap. He got just enough money to pay his debts. But now, he works for me, is my personal driver. And Venus had been trying to get back with me. Bad luck for her, because now I'm with my mom's rival. Luna's the only girl who loved me not for my money. And with her help and her investment, I got revenge on both mom and dad. I made sure to invite Venus and dad to our wedding. Mom was fuming when we said our vows. And when Luna and I kissed, it was so satisfying to see dad's face contort with regret. Mom's with anger and Venus's face with envy.